for being here. Thanks, Eric. Um, we have a full agenda tonight. So with that, I feel like we have a lot of very important things that I want to give us enough time to cover this evening um, and not cut anything short and not feel rushed. I was thinking we should possibly table um, the policy updates and move them to next week so we have enough Oh, sorry, to our next meeting, our next scheduled meeting. We're not meeting next week. So um, I'm just wondering thoughts on that. Heather, I move that we table the policy discussion until our next board meeting. Thank you, Sue. Seconded. Thank you, Rebecca. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Any public comment on that? A quick question from an administrator's yes, standpoint. Is there any reason, or would this cause any problem? Do it in a month or three weeks rather than today? Well, school um, school has started, but we'll proceed to implement the changes that are the most important ones for the school, including parent, one of the most important ones, obviously, parent notification, clubs and activities. So we'll, we would continue to do that. Any further discussion? No? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, so let's start. First up are the approval of minutes. Did everybody get a chance to look over the minutes? Do we have any changes? Uh, one event that I thought I had um, mentioned AI um, that to say thank you to last six high schools for putting in um, specific um, saying that there was um, AI will be uh, considered under cheating in their post or handbook, and I thought it would be good for next minute. Thank you, Rebecca. Anybody else? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So made. Thank you, Jack. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Sue. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Any public comment? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Up next is public comment. Do we have anybody for public comment tonight, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Moving on. Um, financial report. Denise? I've been sitting all day. If you don't mind, I would love to. Okay. So, um, I don't remember when we did this agreement, but the agreement was that quarterly we give finance reports to the finance committee and then semi annually to the board. And so, this is the second. Of the financial statements for the fiscal year ending June 30th of 2023. Um, this first one just compares budget versus actual. So it's the budget you adopted in each of the budgeted funds, um, the expenditures made out of those funds, and then the remaining balance, and then the percentage of the budget that is in the remaining balance. Um, and uh, I will say the good news is that we didn't overspend any budget authority. That's always a good thing. Um, and then uh, Rebecca had a good question through email, and I don't know if you read my answer yet, but um, she pointed out that in some funds, you know, you see a pretty big percentage remaining. And the reason for that is because those funds, like this particular one, is the Bus Depreciation Reserve Fund. And that the purpose of that fund is that we, you know, purchase these high dollar assets, the buses, right? And rather than uh, when we go to replace them, we hit the taxpayers hard with those big purchases to replace them. State law allows us to levy over time, over the life of the bus, to accumulate bus to, re to uh, replace them. So in this particular year, we didn't really replace the bus. And therefore, we didn't spend all the budget authority available to us. And so what we do, and you'll see on the 2024 budget, is I would like to 
adopt a budget that's equal to the amount of money we have left over, not in budget authority, but in cash, plus what we um, intend to have to collect in 2024. So we have budget authority to spend it, then we don't have to come back and ask you for it. This is the meaning for that. So that's true for um, the best depreciation fund, the building reserve fund. Um, we have some projects at the elementary level, so we spend that down. But if you look down at the high school, there's there's quite a bit left. That's another example. And my understanding of that is that at the high school, there are some big projects out there that need to be done. An example would be the siting at Glacier High School. Um, those things we don't have the funding in one year to do so. Uh, the funding that we do get in these funds, we you know we pay for uh, the, our facilities director salaries and benefits, and then maybe some odd projects that might come up. But in general, I think the board and past administration had because I wasn't here <laughs> when that decision was made. But I, I believe what they're trying to do is just accumulate money in there so that there's enough to address some of those projects. Must be got for a bond to get a bit through that, but. That helps with what you were asking me. It does. Just one last part of it. Um, mm -hmm. So some funds we have a maximum we're allowed to leave in there, and and all the funds we're good on all those funds, and we only had to about we're allowed to leave. Yeah, that's correct. This particular report doesn't really reflect that because it's just saying here's what your adopted budget was that you adopted last August. Here's how much we spent. We didn't overspend that budget authority, so we're in compliance with the law. Any other questions? The next one is the cash report, and budget authority is different from cash. Um, so these are all of the funds that we have, both the budgeted funds and the non-budgeted funds. And what we started the year with, uh, the increases in those cash accounts and the decreases. Okay. So um, again, there's no negatives, thank goodness. Um, Rebecca, I know you had a question about the miscellaneous programs fund having an unusually large balance. And so the elementary miscellaneous programs fund is the fund that we account for the majority of our federal grants in. So we've got all the COVID money, the ESSER money, and then the title grants, the um, special education federal money that we have. All runs through there. So in comparison with the high school, it's a, it's a bit different. And the reason there's a big balance here is because um, we got we had a lot of donations through the elementary actually, um, and we also uh, had uh, several grant reimbursements from the prior year that we received in this year. So that's kind of why I did a quick look. <laughs> I got to explain this. So um, that would explain that one. And then um, down you see the, all the high school funds. And the goal is to have more positive for cash accounts. <laughs> on, on the prior spreadsheet, there was a debt service of about $5 million a year, I think, with mm -hmm. the high school. And I'm not sure what it was with the elementary. Um, is there, and I'm looking at the cash balances, and I just don't know when the cash hits the accounts, but it doesn't seem like we're running out of negative. So I'm just curious if you can explain the debt service. Okay, so the debt service fund is for our bond. We're paying off our bonds. Okay. So we go to the voters, we ask for approval of a bond issue, then we sell the bonds, and we get the money to do building projects. So then we have to pay back those bonds over a period of 20 years. So what we budget for in the debt service every year is what we owe in principal and interest, and then the law allows us for um, to uh, pay for SIDs out of here too, like lighting and you know those types of things that the county uh, uh, charges us for. Um, so we shouldn't have a very big cash balance in here at the end of the year. We should only be letting what we need to pay off the debt service for the year. But the reason we do have a cash balance in there is that we got some state money that's intended to help us with our debt service payment. We never know what it is until we get it, but state law says, yeah, you hang on to it, but you use it to reduce the levy in the next year. So there's, you're not gonna see a big amount in here because we're only levying for the year that we have the loan payment. It's 
type of loan payment. And that's our principal and interest payment. Um, oh, you, are you talking about the increases and the decreases? No, I'm talking about the debt service uh, actual. The 3.1 for elementary and the 5.4. Oh, that's budget. Yeah. So the expenditures, the actual. The 3.1 and the 4.946, that's principal and interest, you said? This is principal, principal interest, and then special assessment. Okay. <laughs> that's not debt service. I was thinking we were paying that much in interest. Oh, no, it's principal, too. Yeah, and it's, and there's like, there's seven different bond issues between the two elementary and elementary. Okay. Um, and then the insurance fund financial is the other report that we do. That one is a rosy picture. Um, we actually went backwards a bit. Um, is there no attachment there? It says that there is. I got it online. Huh. Not on mine. It's on mine, but you can't see. That's odd. Right here, that's our attachment. And you can't click on that, can you? I have to go here. You can. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to say it's in the it's in the finance committee uh, two Fridays ago, the August fourth meeting. If you want to grab it from there, it would be in the finance committee meeting from August fourth. Mm -hmm.
going back to four docs because it's going. Could you give a bit of historical perspective? You know, insurance is always one of those things we've been afraid of with our large debt on, and and even a forward look as well of how the new laws and our possible new exploration of a new insurance way of going about working with other schools might work. I, I'd love to hear a little history and a little forward look. Oh, on oh. That? <laughs> sorry, is that too much? Um, okay, so Rebecca, are you referring to the House Bill 332, that new legislation that came up? And That's the forward, forward, but the back two of... Well, our particular self-insurance fund, you know, I just, I came on this, I'm going to play that card. I wasn't here. Jack probably tells you more history than me, but, um, but uh, I, I do know that, and Randy has even shared this because he's been in districts that have had self-insurance funds, and um, it's a, it seems like a better way to go than getting your insurance through, you know, a, a company, but, um, you, you take on all the risks there, and you have a smaller pool, and... Oh, no, I was talking about the history of before we started self-insuring, and we had accrued a large debt, and how we were doing on working our, on our insurance in the past. Okay. How far back do you want to go? <laughs> Are we now... Have we paid it off? Are we now in no sort of trouble with our past debt from insurance? Of the question. Well, over five years ago, we were with uh, uh, Smush, and uh, there were a, a number, I don't remember all the specific issues that existed there, but when we went and uh, bid self insurance, everything came in two to three hundred dollars a month less than Must and other insurance providers, so we've gone that route. Then the first two years, and so we had a $3 million surplus at the time, and our premiums were $300 less, but we also ended up in those first two years having, and we've also since then, have a lot of large individual claims, primarily because of drugs, not so much because of operations and, and other things, and it's the drugs that are costing twenty to $30,000 a month that really have hit us the most. Uh, we've done things to minimize uh, elective surgeries by going to Post Falls or going to Missoula or negotiating things with KRH, which has helped a lot in, in doing that. And so we haven't really gotten we we haven't gotten back to three million dollar surplus. We're just right on the edge of plus plus or minus each year. But we did have to subsidize it three or four years ago with a $725,000 loan. And that has not been paid back yet. And so that will be coming up with certain discussions, both at the health insurance committee level and at the board level on how to address that. Uh, and we are going to go out for bid, uh, commercial bids this next, uh, in the spring to see if we're still, how we still align self-insurance with uh, commercial must and any any other commercial uh, health insurance. So we haven't been as successful as we had hoped to be by any means. I don't know if that helps at all. So that quarter of a million dollar debt that is one of the reasons we moved to self insurance is still there and we still need to work on how to pay it off. That's what I was well, asking. That, that that's 725000 occurred in year or three, I don't remember which, of being self-insured. Okay. I'm checking on that. Everyone lose sight of that money we owe. <laughs> and it's owed to ourselves. Yeah. But still. <laughs> I don't have to make so, sure you do that. <laughs> mine's working. I guess yours not working. I don't have the attachment. My attachment Am I, popped up. Mine's working. Okay. You guys have the information. Yep. Is there any way to connect the inner local? Yeah. It's going to pull up though. Will you check that before we move on to that? So, am I am I reading this correct that after this year, turn your mic not on. counting the seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollar loan, mm -hmm. we're running out of nearly five hundred thousand dollar deficit? Yeah. Okay. Jane, Mike. If you, and if you took away, if you took away the seven hundred twenty-five thousand, 
he took away the seven hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar loan. What it will show is a negative for about fourteen to fifteen thousand negative, which just represents an accumulation of expenditures exceeding revenues over time up to that point in time. And then the next number down is just the fiscal year. Yeah, and that so we went pretty far behind just in the fiscal year. Yeah, so just the fiscal year, not counting the seven hundred and twenty five thousand dollar loan, we just the fiscal year four hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars. Well, there's a few receivables that haven't come in, but the, our consultant, insurance consultant, Scott, he gives us an end of the year figure of claims in the fiscal year that haven't been paid out yet. So you see that in the liability score. And it's pretty high, too. Yeah. Rob? Okay, so these are our, this is the cash. We've got some positive cash in there. You know, we've got some receivables. Not very much, though, in relation to our payables. So this is the loan to the interval agreement fund. Um, and then this is just prepaid retiree insurance premiums that we hold as a liability and then it, you know, it feeds into the next year's financials. Not a lot. Um, the big one is that unpaid claims one. It's an estimate, but um, I think it's an estimate based on um, maybe some actuarial calculations by the consultant. So, so if we paid it off, paid off that 725000 this would reduce down, but it still represents an accumulation of expenditures over revenue so up to that point in time. And then this is just for the month of June, and then this is the whole year. So those reimbursements, I've seen those at over a million dollars in a previous year. So we're down there on those uh, re reimbursements. We're actually down in revenues. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm comparing to one month. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and Jackie said we're going out into the open market to see if perhaps we can get insurance in the open market for cheaper than eight point five million. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the premiums are about between this district and the employees are about six million a year. I don't know if it goes on. You don't have a profit and loss for the year, do you? Go down lower. Let's scroll down to the next page. Okay, so we have premiums of seven million dollars a year. So the question is, and that works out to about thirteen hundred dollars per person per year, a combination of employee and employer contributions. So the real question is, what will the self-insure, what will the commercial policies be? And they'll probably be in the fifteen to sixteen hundred dollar range, but we want to find out for sure and and. Uh, and we'll find that out in the spring when it goes out for bid. Uh, we did it out, we went out for bid, it was either five or six years ago, and our self-insurance at the time was like $1,100, and the commercial policies were in the thirteen to $1,600 range at that time. Yeah, I mean, the, the downside, obviously, is if we're doing $1,100, not covering the actual expenditures, and then we're biting off a half million. Deficit in the well, given year. And when the when the Scott does the when they when our consultant does the actuarial aspects each year, uh, it seems like what has been underestimated is the uh, drug aspect, and that's where we've been set back. If we were to go out to bid. And see what the, the difference is, and charge the different and, and uh, charge everybody that difference. Like the, the school district would have to put out more, and the employees put out some more. Then we would easily cover that deficit. It'd be more of a cost to the district 
because we're on a 70-30 relationship. So if the premium came out to be $1,500, the district would cover 70%, and the employees would cover 30 as a whole, as a group, not, in, not necessarily individually. Because you have individuals, and then you have different family aspects of it. Spouse, employee, and children. Um, so they're all, in, those all have a factor of one, two, two point nine. It depends on claims experience. Yep. And that change would be two years out, one year for research and finding out the facts about how to do it, and then the year after that, it might be able to go into effect. Or no, no it it go into effect for the next fiscal year. So if we bid it out in the spring. Then it would be effective for the uh, July 1st, uh, 24. Hey, Denise, does anybody else have any questions on insurance funds? Moving on, Denise, you're still up in our local. <laughs> okay, so um, traditionally, uh, well, the, di the district has an interlocal agreement between its elementary and high school districts. Um, the high school um, keeps track of the combined funding from both. Um, at the end of the year, I look at remaining budget authority and then cash. There are certain funds we can have reserves in, and so I make sure those reserves are maximized. And then if there's any money that has enough authority and then enough cash, then we figure out what we can transfer to the interlocal agreement fund. Here's how it shook out on the elementary side. The reason there's more than a million dollars here is because we are in the third year of spending our federal COVID extra dollars to supplant our elementary uh, level uh, general fund expenditures. So that's the savings that we had for this year, and we put it in the interlocal agreement fund so that, and I might need some help with the history on that, but uh, the intent there is to cover things, high dollar items like curriculum, um, there's some set aside for gym, replacing high dollar things like gym floors, um, we pay for the maintenance and transportation building out of the interlocal agreement at those kinds of things. But, you know, this will not happen at the end of 2024 because we don't have federal funding anymore in the school year that we're in. This is the last year we're going to be able to um, take advantage of this, okay? So that's why that's going out. Um, the reason that it's going out in the transportation fund is because we levied extra money in there to help with the construction of the new transportation and maintenance building. So this will be the last year of doing transfers of that amount as well. So I need actually board approval <laughs> on the elementary side for these transfers. Let's make them. Anybody willing to make a motion to approve the elementary fund transfers? Second. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Lance. Um, is there any questions? None. Elementary only. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next, interlocal agreement transfer. A high school? Okay. Not as much here. <laughs> um, if there was some budget authority and cash. Um, and then after maximizing and reserves in these funds, um, I would seek approval to um, transfer those over to the local agreement too. Um, the reason there's not as much in the transportation fund at the high school level is that I asked Joe to post some of those uh, payments directly from the high school transportation fund because I just, I don't know, I, there we have the budget and the money there and I thought, any less, I'll have to transfer over at the end of the year, and so that's what he did. <laughs> Any 
anybody willing to make a motion? Thank you, Lloyd. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Are there any questions? None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, hey, Denise, final budget adoption. <laughs> okay, um, so this is your actually your official budget hearing for adopting your budget for this fiscal year. Um, we're going to start out with taxable value, really interesting numbers. Um, our taxable value at the elementary district went up by almost 35 percent. Quite a bit. Um, which drives the value of the middle up, and so it takes less mills to raise the same amount of money that it did last year. Okay. So this is just a five-year history. I kind of threw in some other figures that I haven't shared with you in the past, and that is that taxable value of newly taxable property, that's taxable property that's coming onto the rolls for the first time. And those are kind of telling numbers as well. It reflects, you know, the the new property, you know, the, the new, just new buildings that are going up, new houses, whatever it might be. Um, our taxable value of the property within our district is made up of all the residential properties, but all the business and the farmland, you know, there's several categories of property that are subject to taxation. And this is the scope of all of it. <clears throat> okay. So, interesting. Um, and then I'm, my understanding is they will do another reappraisal for another year. So you're not going to see this increase that much, I don't think, in the next year. So that's that. We'll start out with that. And then here's our proposed budget for this year for our budgeted funds. And um, so it starts out, I, so this adopted budget represents an expenditure budget. This is how uh, much budget authority um, we would like to have for this year. The general fund is a funding formula, and so it's limited. Um, it does reflect the passage of the elementary uh, levy election last May. Okay, so that was, what, 354000 something like that. So that's reflected. So this represented, represents fully funded. Okay, um, and then the, the, all the columns to the left of this expenditure budget is how we're going to pay for that, right? So those three columns actually add up to this. So fund balance reappropriated represents cash that we have that we're using to fund the next year's budget. Non-levy revenue is state and county funding that we get, or maybe interest or maybe interest various things in there, but it's mostly state and county money. money. And then the local tax levy is, is what will go on the property tax bills for these funds um, here in October when we October when we get our property tax bills. And then so the levy mills represent how many mills it takes to raise this amount of money. Okay. And that's just a nice little pie chart. <laughs> Most of it's general fund. Um, the 18% is the debt service fund. That's your next figure. Why for that high? Transportation after that. So Denise, when you say fully funded, mm -hmm. is that the 80% level that is set by the state then? That's 100% level. Oh, that's 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because our local taxpayers approved at 20%. Section, they approved. They have approved uh, that for us to levy that for the elementary. For the elementary. Mm -hmm. Denise, with the new reappraisal, mills are worth more. Mm -hmm. So, are the number of mills that we're asking for has that gone down? And if yes. so, by how much? Um, you can close this one, <laughs> or you can leave it open. But if you would go to the um, two-year comparison. So these next two are pretty telling too. Um, the first one is a comparison of the dollars of those local levies in each of these funds. So look at all the negatives because um, we're just levying less actually in these ones. Okay. 
Um, and then you can see the chart that compares the amount. But then if you go to the comparison of mills, this will answer my question a little clearer. Um, we had an increase in the levies in the general fund, but notice we have a decrease in mills. That's because the taxable value went down. Um, same thing with tech, well, not with technology, because we levy a certain number of mills. The same thing with the, all these other ones. Or the, the mill is worth more, and so we need less of them this year than we did the year before. Pretty significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, then, and the chart actually really demonstrates that. For the debt service, we must have paid off some bond. Uh, we did pay off a small one. And we'll have another one come off um, this year, and then one in the next year. Kind of seeing that debt go down, or that, that obligation go down. But we've got some bonds that go up to 30, 37 also. So. With, with the not using as many mills, I guess, do we, maybe I just don't understand fully how this works or understand perhaps at all how this works, but we're considering running a safety and a tech levy for elementary. Mm -hmm. um, if we have unused mills or we're running less mills, is there any way to put those elements, the safety and tech expenses actually into our budget, into the fully funded calculation so that we could actually include them in our mill? No. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, go back to the prior sheet that shows the dollars. dollars. I, if you look at the total dollars over there, you just see on the right-hand column, you're seeing that we're asking for $287,000 less. So theoretically, you could go out. You're going to, we're going to need to ask for more, but you could ask for a safety or tech levy for that amount, and you're neutral for everybody for the year. In total. In total. Yeah, so, so you could ask for. But they'd still have to approve the two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. Yes, they still have to approve it, but it would have no. It would have no impact on their property taxes compared to the prior year. But one thing you need to remember about the levy elections that we're going to talk about, those, those won't take place until 2025. They're not included in this. There's no impact on this at all. Well, so yeah. It happen to the next year. Yeah, the, it, yeah, if we put it in front of the voters in the next 12 months, it'd be for the next school year. So there's no way to ask for anything to cover this. The only thing we can say is that your your the Tax impact for the schools this year is less than the prior year. Taxpayers should appreciate that. Not much, but still less. Their property taxes didn't go up as a result of the school's need for money. And Jack, that's even with them passing last year's levy for that's the correct. elementary. Basically, we passed the levy and taxes are still going to go down. The, the elementary levy last year. Yeah, yes. the elementary, yeah. If you get to the, so the first structure, right, Jim, then <clears throat> yeah. we ask for a certain amount of money. Yep. If there's more houses and people paying right. it, then everybody pays a little less, but we still get the same amount of money. Right. So, so a tidbit for you. So this is the third year of the elementary levy. The first year it was not applied. The second year it was applied. This year it's being applied, but the tax impact is less. So from a fiduciary point of view, we told the taxpayers that we need to have this authority. But we did not apply it in the first year because we had government money that came in to help cover things. We applied it in the second year because we knew we were going to need it going forward. And because of the property valuation increases and the drop in the need for mills, that you have, your taxes are less now just the way it works out. It's not magical. There's nothing mysterious. It's just the formula that the legislature came up with. So maybe what I'm misunderstanding is the things that we are seeking to pay with those safety and tech are those things that could actually be in the actual budget the elementary budget that would be included in that amount to be considered, and then the fully funded and the levies would be all backed out of 
uh, not um, for the current, not for the year under consideration. No, because the, the, especially in the general, we could do a whole class. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. That is a very complex funding formula, and it's capped all the districts across the state at a certain amount. Okay. So there's no like further wiggle room for us in there Under for this year. So if we want to do anything above that, that's where we have to levy. Yeah, go to the voter, and that sort of stuff. Well, there. actually, this year there's no additional levy for this year. We are fully funded. You have to levy in May. That yeah. got you there. That's the high end, but as Matt reviewed, you know, a few months ago, or a month ago, a couple months, I can't remember when you did that, but uh, because we don't have the ESSER funding, now we've got to pay for everything out of the elementary fund, and we're going to fall short. Okay. And so that's why they did some cuts for this year, too, to fall within that pool. The one thing that we had talked about three years ago was the cliff that we'd be getting on to. And this is the cliff we're on. That's why we have to do some budget re reductions. Even though this is all balanced now, it's balanced because of uh, the, the, I'll use the phrase reduction in workforce, but it was really not filling vacancies. And that's what's allowed us to survive the cliff better than many of the other school districts in the state. But going forward, yes, we're still going to have to ask for a levy for 24-25. The other thing I would mention is the general fund is meant to pay for the general operations of the school district. So it's a little more broad than these other funds. These other funds are called special revenue funds for a reason. And that is the money that is put in there is restricted for a particular purpose. So it's got service, for paying off bonds. Transportation is for transporting students to from school to home. You know, they have a label that describes what they're restricted for. So there's, you know, you've got to look at your expenses and see, well, do they fit in that fund definition? No. You know, so technology is a special revenue fund. Um, the safety levy actually is housed in the building reserve fund in all places. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that's where the legislature put it. You know, when we use the, use the phrase general fund, we have to somehow educate the public on the fact that that's used for basic curriculum courses and, and basic historical instruction. Those schools that go beyond that, you know, when, when we have high levels of different competition or uh, curriculum, those are extras, and we have to come up with ways to support that. And the public has to understand that are they wanting to support the whole program that's available to the students to achieve at the level they want to achieve, or do they just want us to do basic education, math, meaning, math reading, and arithmetic, and nothing more. And, and that's not how you excel a society. So how do we communicate to the public that the general fund is for basic education and, and art and the students at Kalispell schools have been working through higher levels than basic education. And that's why we need the extra money. If you're saying no, it means that you're just wanting us to fall down to average or below. Willing to make a motion to move to approve the KPS budget? Elementary. Oh, elementary. we're on elementary. Sorry. I would move to approve the Kalispell Elementary School budget information as presented. Thank you, Lance. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Sue. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? None. No public comment. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Up next. Moving on to the high school, 42% increase in taxable value. So that means 
you know, our partner district taxable value likely went up too, because that's what this encompasses. We have a lot larger taxable value because of those 13 districts that uh, their students come to our high school. Yeah. Any questions about that? Okay, so then the next is the adopted budget for the high school. Um, same format. This is the highest budget we can have in the in the general fund, but it is not fully funded. It's at about 90% of the maximum that we could have. So that's why we were hoping for that levy to pass. There's some room there to grow. Um, but I would mention that with both the transportation funds, um, those are less than in previous years because we're not levying for the building anymore. Um, I don't think I have much else to say other than in the flex fund, we are levying for, uh, or I'm sorry, in the adult education fund. So we received the transformational learning grant, and we'll get back for the first time in 2024. They set it up kind of, they just have to make it complicated. They put the state money in the flex fund, but we can levy out of the, a matching amount out of the adult ed fund. So poor Peter, <laughs> Matt, they get to, you know, figure out a budget for me, but they have to, you know, account for it in two separate funds because the money's sitting in two separate funds. But that's just, you know, that's just how school funding goes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> legislature. <laughs> How much is that grant, the transformational funding grant? It is a hundred and let's see, of this two hundred and seventy-three thousand, um, coming in here, it's not this whole two hundred and thirty seventy-three because part of this is the advanced opportunity money. So it's, it's like forty-one thousand nine hundred and fifty one over. Is the transfer? Oh yeah, it's this. I'm sorry, because oh. we get the math. Yeah. We match it in here. Wait a minute. Let me think about this. We match it. This is showing it's matched out of flex fund. Let me think about this a minute. I don't have them in the wrong spot. No, I know this is right. I'm just getting my tax messed up. Because we're levying up here. Or adult ed, but this doesn't represent the whole match. Uh, I'm going to have to go back. That's transformational learning graph match. So your advanced opportunity money gets. Well, advanced that advanced opportunity is, it will also come out of adult ed, but that's just on the, but we don't match the advanced opportunity out of here. We match it out of adult education, but 41,000, that's. That's the transformational learning graph match. There's a permissive levy in the flex fund for the match for transformational learning, and there's a match that you can do out of the adult ed for advanced opportunities. Thank you. See you then. I start with you. That's what I understand it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so your question was, though, how much was the transformational learning grant? And Oh, that's the one that was fun, wasn't fully funded. So the total was about 450000 roughly, but OPI made us pick which entity was going to get fully funded, and then the other entity got the rest. And so on the elementary side, I guess you did the sort of, I don't know what happened. <laughs> but I don't sound that big. The elementary got all of it fully funded. And the, the high school got the rest of it. But next year we'll be fully funded, and the year after that we will. But there's a formula, and it's based on the quality educator payment, I think, and so it's going to change next year, and it will be more. Wait, I got uh, confused now. So I basically, know. transformation learning grant, we, we got $41,000, basically $41,000 from the state. We can progressively levy on the high school side another 41000 and it equates to, you know, with change about 83,000 on the high school side for the transformational learning grant that we can use. Right. 
Okay. Yeah, no, I was going to. So it started five five years ago. We applied and got this grant. Or no, two years ago we applied and got a five-year grant. It's supposed to come in this year. Yes, today is this year's first year we have state funding, and we have two more years after this year of it. It's three more years. Three, three more years after this year. Sorry. And they shorted us this year. And yeah. do we know if that shorting is going to continue for the next three years, or we just not another year? Yeah, it's not supposed to. We'll be fully funded for the next three years at both the high school and the elementary. Questions? And then you, we have the chart that shows the differences. So not as much of a difference, I guess. In the, and then there's a middle comparison there too. Oh, no. oh. Oh, I there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get your driver's we license? We were so mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We didn't see it, Pete. Oh, yeah, I just so this is a prime oh. example of this capital value going up and then not as many bills as it needed to fund basically the same amount of money or, or the amount of money that we need. So big drop in bills there. So the public is not going to believe this. Mm -hmm. They're only going to believe the property tax notice they got in the mail. Mm -hmm. Should we show another thing? I'm, I'm ready when you are. Do you understand that's a really cool thing? You want to know what Denise, Jack, you want to know what Denise does on the weekend? <laughs> okay. Uh, like I get uh, emails on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's going to be weekend. And I have to give full credit to, I have a colleague in Bozeman who thinks about this stuff and shares it with all of us, all of us statewide. So he sent this out last Thursday or Friday, and it's to address that very thing. You know, people got their tax or their property tax values, and they freaked out because, oh my gosh, mine went up by 50 percent. My taxes are going to double. All of that. So what he suggested was, and I have addresses on here only. There's a few of you might recognize your address. I chose school district five residents because you're the ones who are going to be subject to these notes we just talked about, okay? So you put in your, you go out to the Department of Revenue website, and that's just a screenshot. I can send you the link. But you go out, find the property, put in the last year's taxable value, and then your new one. There's the percentage increase for this particular property. Um, and then on a residence, the taxable rate, the tax rate, that's the market value you see on the top. The tax rate is 1.35%. So that's that math. So one mil for this particular home is worth um, $55 because you can multiply this by 0.01. So for every mil that's needed, you're giving $55. So we put in the elementary total mills from the prior year than the ones you're adopting tonight and the difference. And so here's what ends up being the tax bill in each of these years. And you can see for this particular piece of property, their value went up by 47 41%, but their actual tax bill is only going up by 0.88%. It's about $14 a year. That's an annual. Uh, there's, and I can share the spreadsheet, but I, this is what Peter with me says on Sunday. She looks at 15 properties, <laughs> puts a spreadsheet on each one. Because I was just curious, you know, I wanted to see, you know, different things. So um, it's on there. Uh, oh, okay. So this is the comment I want to make. These mills are the ones that you have control over. Right? This is what you're adopting tonight and that you make decisions about. 
There's other things on your property tax bill that you as a board don't have control over. That's the, the 95 mills that go to support public education statewide. They're known as the 90, there's 90 mills. There's 40 for general education. There's 22 for high school and 33 for elementary. Um, there's six mills for the university system. If you go look at your property tax bill, there's several items on there. This just represents what you have control over. So I'm not saying that this person's property tax bill is going to be $14 less. It's going to be $14 less for what you're adopting tonight, but it may go up because of those six mills, right? Because um, those are those are mills. I mean, they you're going to be paying more if the mills don't change. But in this case, they're going down. So. Not, I guess you can say it's not our fault <laughs> if your tax bill goes up. Because you're not, you actually are not raising the total rules for your district um, for 2024. That makes sense? Okay, interesting. I don't know if you can use it as a talking points for the other stuff, but. We can, but it's going to be like Jack said. They're they're not going to believe us, and it's going to be very hard to try to explain. Well, because they'll look at the total school. Since the property tax notes broken into three parts, they'll look at the total schools and not look at just uh, KPS elementary <laughs> or the high school. And they're not going to look at their prior year tax notice to see that they're almost the same. Uh, that's just not the nature of people. Oh, I do. What? I do every year, and I. I Get a lesser sex and I see if it's gone up or down. <laughs> That's what Rebecca does now. I'm with you. Now, I will say that for those of you who don't live in Council Elementary District, you live in, say, West Valley or you know, Lakeside, you would want to see what the total bills are for those particular elementary districts and put them in that column. And then the high school would be the same that we're showing here. And then you can see how that shapes up for you. They're all adopting their budgets, you know, within the next week, too. So we should have numbers like that, too. Anybody have any questions? Other questions? Anybody willing to make a motion to adopt our final budget? Cool. Thank you, Lloyd. Second. Thank you, Krista. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? None, no public comment. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks it's almost be answer. worth taking Thank out you, an ad in the newspaper. There's the a lot of traders. Work. They're both just showing. Well, those are examples or some yeah. examples. Well, I'm saying we should put it on the website. <laughs> put in your own address. Well, I would say yeah. you put, some, you somehow put, you could put the spreadsheet up there you said or put up the elementary and high school that shows black and red as being the negative numbers you know, and just mm -hmm. somehow simplify it on there for people to see and let's see if that generates any kind of discussion mm -hmm. so it might cost two thousand dollars to do that but it might be the best two thousand dollars we've spent and if they don't want to believe it then we can't help them anymore if we can get people generated going to the website to even part of it too. Okay, up next we have levy elections. Andy? Okay, so we're proposing that we have an elementary safety and elementary technology, high school safety and a high school technology levies. Those have already been approved by the board. So what you're doing tonight is you're studying the amount of mills Going to propose for each one of those. And so for the high school elementary safety levy, proposing a um, annual levy of 15.6 mil, bring approximately $1.5 million in each year for the next 10 years. So those would be used for the purpose of planning for improvements to and 
maintenance of the school and student safety programs to support school and student safety and security, installing and updating security related facility improvements, staffing and um, <clears throat> installing and updating response systems. So uh, what the cost would be for a $100,000 house would be 2106 annually. That'd be $1.76 monthly. Home with an assessed value of $300,000 by approximately $63.16 annually. That'd be $5.27 monthly. And on a home with an estimated value of $600,000, approximately $126.36 annually. And that's $10.53 monthly. The reason why we use the numbers 100,000, 300,000, and 600,000 is because that's required. That's what's required by state law now. And so uh, that's the information that would go out on the ballot, as well as the description that I just gave. Um, for the elementary technology levy, current technology levy is for $1 million, and so that expires this year in June uh, 30th, 2024, and so then if the levy is not passed that, uh, that we're proposing in October, then that levy would simply go away and those costs would have to be absorbed by the general fund. So this is the only one, the technology levy in the elementary, that is a renewal of a levy that already exists. Um, so we're proposing uh, 15.6 mills for the elementary technology levy. That'd be $1,500,000 that it would raise. And uh, that would be the per for the purpose of this, what we're currently doing with the money, the current levy is purchasing and maintaining technology for the modern classroom including students and staff computers, computer network access, staffing and associated technical training for school district personnel. So on a $100,000 home, that'd be 2106 annually, which is $1.76 monthly, and then 6318 on a $300,000 home, which is 527 monthly, and on a $600,000 home, 126.36, which is 1053 monthly. Uh, we're again asking for a 10-year levy, uh, similar to the 10-year levy that is currently ex expiring. And of course, uh, the additional funding we're asking for is, uh, as everybody knows, the cost of everything is going up and technology is no exception, obviously. Uh, things are getting much more expensive, as well as new things that we need to uh, take care of with, the, uh, with technology as it increases. A, can I ask a question? Yep. That one, Denise, do you have that slide? Because um, this one's kind of funny where the existing levy is a million dollars. Now we're asking 1.5, but because of the increase in mills, it's kind of a weird, it's not going to be a wash, but it. There will be a reduction. Yeah. It'll be a reduction to the levy? Yeah. Okay. It won't be as in, a big as of an increase as I just said because. Okay. Right. So this shows all of them. And he hasn't oh. really talked about the high school ones yet. But if you look at this line here, and these are the different uh, tax or market values of homes, right? Okay. And the ones that you, know, you see the 100, 300,000, 600,000, that has to go on the ballot. So that's why they're colored that way. Um, but this is the total of the tech and the safety levy. If you want to see them broken out, you look up here, okay? This is the tech levy coming off the books. So for a net, if a person voted for both of those levies, this would be the tax impact, and that is um, monthly, right? Yeah, we calculated a monthly increase. So you'd have to multiply by 12 to get the annual. And we show both on the back, by the way. We don't get to show the expiring elementary levy on that. No, we don't show that on there. Well, we can but put we that, that on our information. Right, we can put that on the information pamphlet that we, the mailer that we put out, as well as our other information that we share with the public. Was the, the offset that we have to 
Yeah, on the what ballot, it won't show right. the option. Yeah, we can't show that Because technically, it's a new levy that they're voting on, but it's actually a renewal of a levy that we had that uh, is expiring. This doesn't start until fiscal year 2025. Yeah. Even though we're voting on it in October, it doesn't start until, like she said, till 2025. Are we still going to have a, are we going to have a one-year gap or we sunset after next year? Oh, gotcha. And then this would pick it up. Fiscal year 25. Fiscal year 25. Which is 24. Yeah, July 1. Yeah. yeah, July 1, 20, 24. Um, is there, uh, is there a, um, any attachment for this as far as like what the levies are going to be used for, like a bullet point list for us of what they are? You list, you said some stuff, Randy, but I don't see any attachments and I was trying to keep track of it. Yeah, there's not an attachment here, um, but we do have information that we're putting out to the public that will explain exactly what they're being used for. And um, similar to uh, the information pamphlet that you see right there that he just brought up. Okay. So this, this was, okay. So this was some of the, you know, items that we worked on and just, you know, just tried to, um, you know, identify exactly what the safety levy um, was going to go through. And we sat down on the central office team, obviously IT, Randy, Sarah, everybody, to, trying to identify all of the components that would be in the safety levy. And then also, you know, basically in a tech levy, um, you know, what that would look like. Um, and then just we're putting together some of these talking points, um, you know, for what the levy um, would go for, you know, uh, KPS is humbled to be entrusted with other people's children to take a responsibility to ensure the safety, the safest experience and environment possible. So, you know, that's kind of um, just an introduction on um, some of the information that we want to be able to get out and to be able to use. And it kind of goes back to what Jack talked about a couple months ago. You know, we want to be able to resonate. We want to have those attachment points. And that's, you know, really important for us, you know, you know, just you see in the second paragraph, and I don't know how well you um, you know, it's unfortunate reality schools face both internal and external threats. Um, you know, when we were going to partner with, you know, Cal State Police Department with resource officers, looking at, you know, safety officers, um, safety monitors. Uh, and so those are some of the things that are in the, um, some of those things that we've identified, and I'll get to those key commitments in a minute. We're asking the community to partner with us by uh, funding this important safety levy so that we can secure staffing services and environments for even safer schools. Um, you know, this levy will enhance existing safety measures as well as create pro proactive solutions connected to all aspects of a student's educational experience. And then on those key commitments, so some of these key commitments went through, you know, just some of our brainstorming, some of the things that we need, but a lot of them, you know, were identified in some of the in the safety audit that, that was completed last year that was paid for by the community. So, you know, we went through and made sure we included those, looking at um, resource officers, safety officer, uh, communication, so both on the physical side and then also on the mental side. So you'll see that, so, you know, um, health and wellness coordinator would be in there, some of our counselors would be in there. Um, we just tried to break it out into, you know, big, um, ticket items, you know, right there. And so how we went through and developed the, you know, the budget for this is we, we went through and looked at all of the things that we would need. And, and uh, that's where, you know, when you see, when we're, you see some of the ballot language and what Randy was talking about, you know, that's where we came up with, you know, the 1.5 on the elementary side for both the levies and 1 million on the tech side for the high school. And then for the safety levy, 1.6, um, you know, and that was just, Know, where we felt that what we needed, you know, to be able to um, provide these uh, items and services for, you know, for our students, for our school, and basically for our community. Um, we looked at it, we broke it out, and Eric and Jason did a great job of this. Hey, you know, what would this look like? This is current uh, prices, but we're looking out 10 years. So what would it look at at 3% and 5%? Um, and so when we talked in the finance committee, you know, we were looking at, hey, you know, this is the cost, you know, we feel like we can, uh, you know, provide all of these things that we've listed in the 
levy that would resonate with with our community, you know, and that's where we ended up with um, the you know 1.5 on the elementary and then the 1 million and the 1.6 on the. But these are some of the things that are in there. Again, I won't read them to you. Um, and we'll have this information for you. And then we went through and you know identified that you know the same thing on the on the technology side. You know, hey, why are we asking you know for this levy? Um, you know, what are some of the key, key commitments in there? You know, you see um, one of the things that Matt uses, and, and uh, you know, it, it, you know, can't imagine um, you know without technology what a classroom would look like. You know, what a modern classroom would look like with you know without technology. And, um, it, it's just not looking at you know end of year life you know for a lot of our technology is you know it's a constant replacement and some of the things that we looked at you know some of our labs and some of our other things you know about every every five years so this would give us you know our lab replacement it also gives us some of the technology um, but you only you know you also have the physical side but then you also have you know the, the security side you know on the back end and that's everything that you know, Jason and Eric and their team are doing, you know, to keep kids, you know, safe. And that's why we also looked at having, um, you know, somebody communications uh, monitor to, to be able to monitor some of the things that are going on on social media. And this was our best thinking, uh, you know, with Abby and um, tried to include, as, you know, as many things in there that were in the, you know, in the audit. But also, you know, you also have to go out with, the levy have to be um, a little bit general. I miss Heather and Brandon. Um, oh. um, one of the things we were really focusing on too with this brainstorming was <clears throat> focusing on commitment. Instead of throwing out the general idea of voting on a safety levy and we could do this or we could do that possibly, really focusing on committing to this is where the funding will go because safety is so broad. Um, it covers a huge span. So we really narrowed it down to key commitments that we can stick to and we can explain to the public tangible things so they know what safety looks like to us. Regarding the uh, safety audit, the security audit, the, and I don't know exactly what categories the safety audit used to address different issues and if those category labels are the same labels you're using there or different ones. And likewise with the security audit, I don't know if the labels used for the different areas of security are the same that we can convey. And I don't know how understandable each one of them are because many people may not fully understand that you can say structural improvements and they're going to think, well, we just gave you $54 million to build buildings. What do you need to change? So the, the key question in my mind is, are, do we have the right labels on those areas for the public to understand? Just a thought. I think we have to be careful with the structural um, improvements because if we were to give out a list and label exactly what the audit had, we really don't want to do that either. Sure. So yeah, there's a balance with that. I think instead of calling it structural improvements, safety audit deficiencies. I mean, as, as a parent and community member, that tells me that there's something that needs, there's a problem that needs to be fixed. Well, it was discovered in an audit I process. Mean, I, don't, I don't know if we want to do that or not, and I'm being pretty candid, but I mean, as a parent and a community member, if we've had a safety audit and it's identified deficiencies and this is the case of that, that um, sure motivates me a lot more than, than structural improvements. Yeah. Sounds like we have something good that we're improving on. Even you know your label on there, but you're still general about you know what you say. Yeah. You know within the. I guess I like that thought because it says that we were had enough foresight to conduct an audit yeah. to tell us what's positive and what's negative. If we talk about addressing the deficiencies, it's like yeah, we had an audit done to find out what our weaknesses are. Now we need to address them. We're trying to do our job. Help us. And, and I know you guys don't have this, but. Um, in that uh, first paragraph under the, you know, the safety levy, and, you know, we put in there, thanks in large part to community donated funds in 2023 benefited from a nationally recognized consultant providing a safety and security audit of all our established practices, supportive measures, and physical structures and needs of our schools. 
Although our schools remain a safe place for children vulnerabilities were identified, the levy request would fund a comprehensive uh, approach to remedy remedy those findings. Too, too many words. Yes, that's the elevator speech. So <laughs> when you're talking to your neighbor, uh, you can use those. But when you dial it down, we'll get it into a couple sentences. Thank you. <laughs> Have you ever known me for a couple sentences? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, this really boils down to The only time you had fewer sentences is the day you were hired. Interviewed, excuse me. <laughs> um, and I think the safety audit part of it is really important. You know, that's one of the first things that uh, was mentioned when I came on was, uh, what are you doing about the safety audit and addressing the concerns in there? And there, there are things that, you know, that uh, are fairly easy to take care of like we talked about before with uh, having all staff wear badges and visitors be identified as they come into the building so we know who's in the building. And then there's big ticket items, which are, you know, those those things that uh, you may not be able to address in one time, but you can address them over time. And that's one of the reasons why the safety audit was performed, to identify those things. Actually, the one group that I went and talked to uh, and uh, talked a little bit about this was coming was the Evergreen Chamber of Commerce. And one of their first questions was, uh, what are you doing about the safety audit that was funded by the community? So we, I said, well, we're planning on presenting this to the board to try to address some of those concerns that were, were there, so many per year. So, looking at. Um, do you want to go through the levy amounts for the rest of them, or would you like us to vote um, on elementary safety and elementary safety? Why don't you do that first, and uh, or do you want to see that spreadsheet that she had? I could go through the rest of them, and then Denise could put that spreadsheet back up there with the total cost. Or you want the language? Uh, the spreadsheet that, that she had with total cost. We also included $400,000 home in there, even though that doesn't necessarily need to be on the ballot language. Well, it doesn't need to be on the ballot language, but uh, that's the cost of a medium home in Kalispell area, medium cost of a home. So we're going to include that because that's one that will resonate with most people because that's our medium cost. And we'll include that on the information but it won't be on the ballot language. Uh, the median cost as of what year? The median cost is how it's I believe that's current. Right. Medium yeah. cost is it's current, right? It's just an estimate, but last May, um, the median cost was 300000 We were able to get an amount from the Department of Revenue, and it was 300 and some thousand. But with property values going up so much, we just kind of made an estimate that the average median value. Thank you. Go ahead and do the elementary or uh, the elementary first, and then. Anybody comfortable making a motion to set the mill amount for the elementary safety levy as presented? Thank you, Jim. Do I have a second? Thank you, Sue. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion on this? Any public comment? Seeing none, elementary only. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Anybody willing to make a motion to approve the set mill amount for the elementary technology levy as presented? Thank you, Jen. Do I have a second? It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on this? None. Public comment? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any um, levy amount for high school safety? Can you bring the spreadsheet back up again?
Okay, for the high school safety levy. The high school safety levy. We're recommending 6.8 mils annually for 10 years. Uh, we decided something else we decided is what would be the term of the safety levies. And so we actually, they could have been made permanent, but we decided that we would go with 10 years. So that would give future boards and superintendents options to decide what they would do uh, as obviously costs increase. So we're recommending for the high school reserve fund safety levy, uh, those mills of 6.8 mills, which would bring in approximately 1,600,000 each year to the building reserve fund for the purpose of planning for improvements of maintenance of school and student safety, programs to support school and student safety and security, installing and updating security related facility improvements, staffing and installing or upgrading response systems using contemporary technologies. Taxes of this proposal will increase the annual taxes on homes with an assessed market value of 100,000 by approximately $9.18 annually or 77 cents monthly on a home with an assessed value of 300,000 by approximately 27.54 annually or $2.30 a month and on a home with an assessed value of 600,000 by approximately 50 $5.08, $4.59 monthly. And again, like I said, the duration of that levy would be for 10 years. The high school technology levy, again, which is a new levy, uh, we would ask for 4.25 mills, being approximately $1 million each year in the technology fund for the purpose of purchasing renting, repairing, and maintaining technological, technological, technology equipment, including computers and computer network access, funding, and, an, and associated technical training for school district personnel. Passage of this proposal will increase annual taxes on assessed market value home of $100,000 by $5.74 annually, or $0.48 cents monthly, on a home with an assessed value of 300,000 by approximately $17.21 annually or $1.43 monthly and on a home with an assessed value of 600,000 by approximately 34.43 annually uh, which would be 287 monthly and again a 10 year limit obviously the high school levies cost less because again it's spread over the larger high school area that includes the independent K-6 and K-8 school districts. And if you bring up that spreadsheet with the totals there. So there are all the associated costs with all of them together, what it would cost uh, if you voted for all four levies and all four levies passed in the elementary district or just the two levies in the high school district, they would uh, cost the individual taxpayers. And then also you see the red line, that's the, uh, that money will still be raised, but it will be a, less of an increase because that levy already exists. For elementary, yep. We need some money there. Less than a dollar a day. You can help. Thank you, Denise. Yeah. Okay, is anybody willing to make a motion to set the mill amount for the high school safety levy as presented? I move to set the mill amount for the high school safety levy as presented. Thank you, Lance. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jack. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any further discussion on this? None. Any public comment? None. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> any opposed? Next. So made. Thank you, Jack. Second. Thank you, Krista. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the technology levy? 
Any public comment? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Good, everybody. Big one. Okay, we're going to skip to, we're on business items, um, KPS or KMS handbook. The KMS handbook, which was not approved at the last board meeting when you approved the other handbook. Take a chance, have a chance to look at that. Elementary, Elementary only. <laughs> Anybody willing to make a motion to approve the KMS handbook as presented? Thank you, Rebecca. Do I have a second? Good. Thank you, Lance. Any discussion? What comments? None. Elementary only. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next. Oops. Um, personnel action items. Liz? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are monthly personnel or bi weekly. Um, not a whole lot of hires or resignations right now. We're, we're making gains, so that's a lot of gaps to fill. Thank you, Rebecca. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Krista. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? None. Any public comment? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Up next, superintendent search, higher firm. Liz? So we received three bids from different businesses, and um, those were presented. Everybody have an opportunity to look through. Second one, Pete. There's a little cheat sheet for you guys, the one page of um, some highlights. Any questions on this? Thoughts? 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 Yes. I thought that we definitely need to look at the national. Looking in Montana, I at least think we need to. Uh, businesses that offered an only in state search item of like. Which, which we used before? Are you know, I don't know if we've ever. Do we ever <laughs> use oh, McPherson? Our district has not, obviously, that our district has not um, suitably used. Yeah, I was about to say, and remember that they did not find anyone in that. Liz, so the first three candidates they interviewed were all from Montana and after conducting a national search. <laughs> yeah, so why would we do that? Like Not really a question, but um, after after attending the MTSBA symposium and their annual meeting, um, and listening to uh, how they conduct business, I would uh, be very comfortable with them performing their search. In the past, we've used MTSB because we've been on a normal timeline. The reason why we use Kabila is because we're on a shortened timeline. And they could go filter more easily. Um, and that's why uh, Missoula used them to filter whoever our past superintendent was. <laughs> a 
completely forget. <laughs> Pardon? I don't remember who it was. Um, so yeah, MPFB could be a realistic <laughs> option here as opposed to Kabila because we have a normal timeline. That's my comment. Liz, did MPSBA, how many um, districts are they working with right now? Was it one or two? We have two listed. One is actually supposed to have closed, so I don't know. It's not gone, but it's just one is open. And I know last time when we were going between the two, we were kind of leaning, we ended up going with Coleva Law Firm because MTSBA had a lot of districts they were working with. So that was a question that I had of how many they're working with right now. So if they only have one, I think that plays a part as well. Rebecca? I hear nobody saying yes to Fisted and Jacobson, or is it going to make down to the decision of two based on price and success of uh, their last search that we know of? Is everyone going to say not interested in these conspiracy or other people interested in McPherson? I'm pro McPherson. Yeah. McPherson has a great success rate. They're just really expensive. So I dove into their website. In five years, 80% of the people they hired are in the same position that they were hired for. Over a 10-year period, 50% of the people they hired are in the same position that they were hired for. So they have a good success rate for people that they've hired for. In that aspect, they're just really expensive. That's the bad part for doing the same kind of thing, especially when we have the people at Missoula use them and they hired someone from Montana. That's my only problem. Any other thing to think about? Right, right. So, well, it, they do superintendents and administration, so do all over. Are we willing to rule them out? Lloyd. Madam Chair, may I make a motion to, uh, I would like to make a motion to use MPSBA for our next superintendent search. Second Anything? that. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Lance. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on this? I just have a quick question, if you know, just kind of offhand, what the plus is on their total. And I, I know we talked about it a little bit before. Um, was it like advertising costs or? Well, there's our um, part of the administrative cost. Um, the other plus could be if you guys decide that there's five candidates that are really qualified and they, this contract includes um, four. So little things like that, you can pay for an additional background search. Um, I think it was seven hundred fifty. The plus is there, but it's not going to be. Um, I also just my clarification: all three of these firms would do a national. If you look at the MTSBA contract, it says that the extra is travel expenses, meals, lodges, printing, postage, $160 per hour, $1,500 for a full day, $750 for a half day, $500 for each additional day. Like it has pricing for all of them if you actually look at their contracts. So it could be up to what McPherson and Jacobs is, depending on if we have five people, four people, or whatever. So that's why I'm on the fence on either of them. Well, and those it could add up. But those additional travel costs, those are on top of? The 75. Um, well, in this contract, how many did how many did we have? Three visits? Four visits? Three consultations included. Yeah, three board consultations. So that would be any additional on top of that? Right. Any further discussion? I'm like, I just, I just like to say that we this board has been pretty supportive and and our symbiotic relationship with MTSBA. It really helped us out. We've helped them out, and uh, and I know one of the things that I didn't like about um, our last superintendent search was that during our our closed session board meetings we were steered. We were try, she tried to steer us a little bit one way or another. I think that's a decision that we need to make, not not the person who's doing our search. Um, I know that. Uh, Deborah Silk specifically is very um, 
by the book and, and will help us but not push us in one way or another. Rebecca? Oh no, I just want to say um, I think Jack, Sue, and Lance were on the board when we did, went through MICA search did, uh, and we used MTSPA at that point, did they in fact go over budget or were they within, the, if anyone, does anyone remember, they stayed What? Which search? MICA. MICA. I don't remember, but if it was, it was significant. I do believe the one for MICA when we uh, hired um, Park Plateau, we used MTSPA. Oh, yeah, we've used MTSB for the last 35 years. Even when we had what was called the Joe and Bud Show, we had co superintendents for two different time periods. What I'd say about the MTSBA is that you know, they are a statewide organization. They know who's looking, they know what schools are looking, they know what superintendents are looking. And I would assume if you're out of state and you want to get into the state of Montana, you'd probably go look at MTS. Very comfortable. They're well experienced. And I've had. I would guess too that because they know our schools, they know what kind of superintendent we're looking for and kind of what the job is going to entail. So they might be rather than somebody from out of state. Anything further? Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? With MTSBA. Um, up next, we've got the consent agenda. There's quite a few items on here. Did anybody have any questions? Anything you want to look through, talk about? No questions? Anybody willing to approve the consent agenda? I do have a question. Okay, sorry. On the school box app, um, there's one that looks like elementary box apps pre approved by the school board. Are these the ones that have been? In existence perpetually, I guess. These should all be new routes because of where they're initiating from. Okay. But the stops, but right? the stops themselves are yeah. the ones that have always. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Making sure I understand. So if there's there's any issue with any of the stops as previously approved, those would be taken up with the transportation department. And the uh, if there's any change application last year we routes were approved from the new train that's already been done. Change to the route does come. The change to the stop is. Question. The uh, KPS and MSU nursing contract is that is that costing us? How much is that costing us? Or are they is that like an internship type deal? It's not costing us. Thank you. <laughs> I move to pass the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Lance. Can I get that? Thank you, Sue. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? None. Any public comments? Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, we have upcoming meetings. Um, I noticed on here. 
There's a lot of meetings, but one that has been added, there will be an extra communications meeting on Monday, for the 21st yep. at 9 a.m. in the um, basement at the admin building. Anybody would like to come to that? Kim? On that, um, mm -hmm. I guess maybe this has tethered more to the levy election presentation. We set the levy amount. I'm just kind of curious what the next step is, what the next plan is, what the next thing is to do everything we can to garner community and get approval before levy. We need to get this email out to all the trustees so we have talking points. Okay. Uh, the next step is that uh, we'll start working on the mailer. Uh, I already have a rough draft of the mailer. And then um, we'll work on the information to be handed out to the public and then a road show with slides and so forth that will go to like the Rotaries and the Chamber of Commerce. I think our first presentation is on August 22nd to the Kalispell uh, Chamber of Commerce next week. And then any other civic groups, if you guys have ideas for civic groups, we go to that. Uh, we'll also try to set up a schedule for public meetings. Where we'll just have a space and we'll have the presentation and just make it to members of the public as they come in. Just try to get in as much information out as possible. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, will talk about the levy at the uh, on the yellow bus tour, let all the teachers know about it. And also then on Thursday, we're having a K-12 admin meeting, and we'll talk about that and how best way to get the information out from there, open houses, and so forth. So basically now everything kind of kicks into high gear as we've got this short time period to get as much information out there as we can. Now, we can only give information. We can't advocate one way or the other for the uh, well, we can. can. You can. can. When I said we, I meant administration. Sorry. Right? Yeah. Um, Randy? Yeah. So, I mean, the next technical step is Denise put the, put the ballot. But um, in the past, we voted to let to allow the board to say for the levy, not to say the levy. That the tech, safety and technology levy, like you remind you when you say, always say. Um, are we, is that not true of this type of levy? We've never run a safety. You know, the board can advocate for any levy. As individual members, right? As individual members. As individual not, members. As a, not as the board as a whole, but as individual members, we can advocate for any levy. But as for a board action to advocate, we need to vote. For general fund levy, we need to vote on being able to do that. Is that true for safety? That's what we just did. Are you asking? No, we have always had a separate vote where we vote that the board can, um, as an entity, um, vote for, uh, promote the levy, not just promote information about the levy. All we did tonight was set the amount for the levy. Are you asking, like, if a group of us were to go, like, both signs and kind of campaign for the levy, like, we have to vote on that for a group of us? I'm, right I'm not clear as to what you're asking. I think well. Rebecca, I, I think what you're getting at is we had to approve Micah to go out and advocate for the levy one year. Oh, the I'm board sorry. does not. Okay, sorry, my memory. Have, you're right, it's the administration, yeah. not for the. But I, I think even the laws have been changed where we can't even say you can go out and say yes for the levy. I'm not sure about that. Okay. But Sorry, I, I was yeah, confusing the administrators. Right. Is that due just on um, school hours? And for admin, is it permanent? Is it? Right. We'll have to check the law. For admin, all we can do is get the information out. We can't advocate for it because basically admin are on 24-hour contracts. So they're pretty much always on duty. Whereas a teacher, once they're off duty, they can go out and advocate for it. Or other school employees. My question, I guess, for everybody is rather than us running into each other, scheduling groups to talk to, um, can we um, send them to you, Heather? I mean, I have a couple groups I'm going to talk to every week. Great. And then maybe we can reach.
reach out and see if anybody would go with you. You can create a board doc, then it's live for everybody. If anybody has, and we're going to throw it out there again, anybody has any groups that you have set up something with or you're planning on reaching out, reach out, let us know, and if you'd like somebody to go with you, we have board members that would love to be part of that. We have two schedules. One is the required schedule by law for uh, the vote, and I was wondering if, you, if Denise could put that out for everybody to see how it matches with what uh, the promotional aspect of it that Randy and whoever will be coordinating so that we can see, we can let the people know the date, when things will get mailed out, and those sorts. Of, and there's not a lot of legal dates, but there's a few of them. You're asking when the ballot. Yeah, those kind of things there. Yeah, North the election North. calendar. Yeah, September there you go. The election calendar. That schedule. September 18th. If, if that could be made available and then it could be meshed with uh, whatever the promotional calendar will look like. Liz, didn't you give it to us last week about? Or who talked about that last week? Was it you? Talked about mailing out stuff, Denise, and dates and stuff for the levies? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, mail out, mail out, <coughs> September 18th. A certain time frame. There's the election day. We always do. There's 45,000. Have to mail them all out on the same energy back in October. Two sure. weeks, I think. I think it's a two week turnaround. Yeah, they'll come back probably. They'll start coming back. They'll drop them off until October 3rd, which is the actual election day. Yeah. Our next board meeting will be the 12th. So that'll be days before ballots go out. So between now and then, we're going to have to keep moving forward with this and talking about it, meeting with people, and keep this momentum moving forward. Good with that? Yeah, and then uh, about as far as I'm meeting with Stephanie tomorrow, and we're starting to work on the presentation that we're going to put together. If you guys want that presentation, once it's put together with whatever group, whatever group you're going to, then we can share it with you too. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I think we'll send it to everybody. Yeah. Everybody yeah. needs it. Yeah. Further on Jack's point, you know, voter, we haven't done a um, November, I mean, a, a fall levy in a really, really long time. So uh, voter confusion is always an issue with the mail in votes, and it became worse a couple of years ago when mail in votes, you know, we really, really, really have to be. Make sure and stay really clear on yes, this is what this is, you know, because I'm quite concerned about voter control. Do you know of any other things going out? Are there maybe it'll be less because we don't at least have the primary elections at the same time. So, um, White Finch, I heard today we met with the county election administrator, and White Fish is running a high school bond on the same day, October 3rd. Okay. And Mary is doing a bond election on November 7th. And the city is running a, some kind of levy election. She wasn't a little clear. You know, the safety levy. Public yeah, safety. and that's also on November 7th. So our district in Whitefish is the bond on October 3rd. And the other two levies will be on November 7th. At least we have a heads up with that for mm -hmm. potential confusion. And then maybe we need talking points. Our safety versus health of city. And, and we kind of talked about that in communication. Especially when we talked about roads and stuff. And maybe also have that in there. So we've had one meeting. We've had one meeting with the. Police chief, yes, uh, our levies, uh, the safety levies, and we'll probably set up another meeting. So.
trying to make some differentiation yeah. from what they're running, what we're running. Anybody else? I have a motion to adjourn. Well, I have one thing yeah. not Scott. been referenced, but um, I went to the Saturday and Heather and Krista event. Helped a lot of kids just were able to give up. Huge to uh, work you did, you know, set up the teardown and space the entire day. I just had one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to be sending out an email to all board members. We have been challenged by the Kalispell Education Foundation again this year to get 100% fish challenge. Um, so I will send that information out to you. Last year we met the challenge with 100% participation. I don't think we beat the dollar amount, but um, that's okay. I think it's important that we'll support that foundation. We look for that email. And do it all be too so they can get that incentive correct. Right. Whoever does it. Not this yeah. week, next, next week. Right? Yeah. Okay. But piggybacking off of that for our new trustees, just so you all know, um, when you go at the end of the year to see these <laughs> teachers get these grants, um, you are thrown under the bus by Dorsey of not meeting 100% participation in front of everybody there at the event. So I'm asking that everybody, even if it's a dollar or 50 cents, we all hop on board because that was not fun my first year as a trustee. Aww. So please, if, it'll be not this week, but next week, right, Sue? Because then it, they can get additional funding. Yeah. Okay. On the other hand, I could be the super new board member. My first year, I donated $5 in the name of each trustee. Come on, Kristen. <laughs> so I have a motion to adjourn. Move. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Um, Who did you? I got you down first. Who seconded? Oh. Jim, did you second? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Sue and Jim. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.